Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we've got another episode of Why the hell do I keep on doing this to myself? Right, so what we've got on the desk today is another late night eBay purchase i.e. I put a bid in, didn't think I was going to win and ended up winning it So what this is, is a Kyosho Hummer H1 But you may be wondering, oh Kyosho never made a Hummer H1. Well, they did within a collaboration with a mag or Build It Weekly magazine kind of thing. Which, that was, ooh, I want to say 10, 20 years ago or so. I don't bloody know. I've only done a little bit of research for in this video. Like I said, I put a bid in thinking I weren't going to win it and I... Uh, Won it for 50 quid. Yeah. These are supposed to be going for over like a thousand when you've done it through the magazine build. And the ones which I've seen for sale on eBay and also the one on Facebook Marketplace. One of them's going for about 400, the other one's going for 600. So I thought, hmm, if I win this, I win it. If I don't, I don't, no win, or no loss to me, well, I want it. So, as you can see, the body itself isn't actually in the best of shape, and whoever put it together, I think, clearly didn't actually know what they were doing. Because this top panel shouldn't be removable. This rear panel should be removable. Is also missing the front windshield. It's missing this uh, passenger side. Oh, I want to say. Okay, driver's side door because we're, this is an American vehicle. Our oh, driver's side door is this side. Oh, it's confusing me already. But it's missing the glass out of that window. It's missing a few details like the wing mirror on the opposite side. And in general, the body is just slightly twerked. So. Kind of want to keep this body, but kind of struggling to find replacement parts, i.e. the windshield. The wing mirror doesn't bother me that much, and to be honest, with a bit of sanding, body filler, and some plastic welding, I can probably make this roof all into one. Because, the reason why it has this removable panel in the first place is actually underneath this body. It, it is a nitro. So it didn't come with any controllers or anything. And I think whoever, like I, like, like I just said with a body, whoever put this together, I don't particularly think they knew what they were doing. Because some of the servos and everything are like really out of alignment for it. The amount of camber which is on these wheels is a uh, very anti-camber gang if i want to put it in some form and another big dead, dead giveaway is with this with a bit of research i've done is this kit you actually have to build the engine yourself unlike the other kit i had where it was that uh, brambo subaru which was electric this is nitro just listen to this. There's like zero compression in that. But for me, that kind of works in my favor. Because what this project is going to be, is I'm going to strip all this out, rebuild it from the ground up, and I'm going to uh, electric swap it and convert it into a crawler. Kind of, more like a trail truck. Because I like the body, and if I do find the replacement parts to fix that body, I wouldn't want to be trying to do anything high speed related with it. But the tires it comes with are, are half ass decent. I want to say half ass decent rubber on them. So I did try to fit some bead locks on it. 
but it has this really really weird uh, hex on it so bear in mind standard standard RC will well, stand standard so standard RC wheel nuts are I want to say M4 well this takes a 10 mil socket to undo I was thinking all right I know this is 1 8 which that kind of surprised me so as soon as I got this wheel nut off I noticed hmm that's a pretty big hex and it's plastic There's a slightly smaller hex underneath. Still not the same size as standard um, standard rims. And then the next thing I noticed, you may have already questioned it, it's portal axled. I know like the real Hummer is portal axled, so is this. So I thought, oh, look, it's a, t it's a T Rex 4, but just IFS. That was me being sarcastic, by the way, if you couldn't tell. But seeing that, I thought, oh, that may make it a little bit more interesting for to be a rock crawler. But then the next thing I also noticed is how uh, loose these are. It's the exact same on the other side. I haven't actually popped the wheels off on the rear yet. I feel like I should start stripping this down now and see what other parts I need. I currently have a Kyosho 1.8 scale adapter on the way to convert this over to electric, but I need to find out if the center diff in this is the same style center diff as that adapter requires, or do I need to go out and find another one? So, enough chit chat, let's get to it.
And that is all we've got time for today, folks. Kind of have to shut. So I kind of have to cut this video short to due to some family matters. But we have now fully electric converted it. I wish I could get out and go do running video footage, but that's gonna have to be held off until maybe a week or maybe next week or the week after. Not a hundred percent sure. But just to give you a little rundown what has happened underneath is we've got a new or oh, well I never actually knew this but Hobby Ring recently or maybe last year I believe released a new 1080 so we've got a new one of them in we've upgraded to a 20kg servo which does absolute wonders to the steering and what we've got is a Johnson 600 motor into a into a three to one reduction box which is a little this motor combo in general is a little bit overkill this is what i'm using in my kamaz 8x8 build currently the reason why it's going into a reduction box is i found it was actually a little bit too fast for this and then we're going into a standard gear pinion setup which I'm kind of pissed off with the eBay seller. This is labelled as a Kyosho 1 8 scale uh, electric conversion adapter plate. Well, this is a Kyosho 1 8 scale, and that adapter plate didn't work, so I've had to uh, drill and modify the chassis as you saw in the video just to move one of the holes closer so I can actually bolt this down without it moving. So apart from that and the full rebuild, it runs it runs quite nice. I've had it just for a little sprint up and down the road and a little test off the off-roading capabilities. The only thing I may change up about it is I did leave the front differential unlocked and I did lock the rear differential. You may be wondering why I also just decided to use a lighter to melt hot glue into the diff. My hot glue gun decided that it was gonna break. So yeah, fire was the only option. But apart from that, I have enjoyed it. It's been quite a simple conversion and rebuild. The next thing on the list really is to uh, give this body some TLC. Because, because as you can see, this panel not attached, nor are the side panels really attached by much. So, and like I said earlier in the video, there is also still no front windscreen. So that is on the to-do list. But for just now, I think I may run it. Well, may glue this panel back in place and just run it as it is to see what what it is capable of and what the next and what the next and what the next steps are going to be with this project i would like to get it painted at some point but i don't know how much of a ball lake that is going to be considering how considering how this body is put together but Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this. I've enjoyed this kind of a uh, random odd project. But like I said, I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you come back for more. So if you do, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of this. Let me know if you've ever had any experiences with the uh, magazine build version because it would be kind of helpful to know how much on this body should come apart apart from that i'll see you